Having previously made videos on New York State parks within the Long Island, New York City, Palisades, and Taconic regions, I'm continuing with this episode by going further upstate. This is all in connection with the centennial of the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historical Preservation, the state agency responsible for state parks, state historic sites, state golf courses, and state park preserves. So far, I've talked about some of the destination parks, such as Jones Beach, Bear Mountain, Franklin D. Roosevelt State Park, Minnewaska, and now we'll continue further up as we get to the capital and Saratoga region. Previously, I talked about places that are closer to New York City, very much connected to its residents within a reasonable driving distance, many of them not too far from public transportation. But when it comes to Albany, there is a train line that goes there, the famed Hudson River line on the Amtrak. But sadly, Albany is one of the few state capitals that does not have a train station within its borders. Oh, it used to, prior to 1968, the Albany Union Station, which is today an office building. But the closest train station now is Albany Rensselaer, across the Hudson River, which has a very nice train hall, this building built towards the beginning of this millennium. And continuing on my theme of the closest state parks to New York City, perhaps there's a state park in Rensselaer that's close to this train station. And within that walking distance is the Cralo State Historic Site. In 1924, this historic house was donated to the state by Susan Van Rensselaer Strong, a descendant of this colonial Dutch family that had a huge impact on the Albany capital region. It is a remnant of the 1,500-acre manor of Killian Van Rensselaer. His grandson Hendrik built this house in 1707, known at the time as Fort Cralo, serving as a trading post with the local Native Americans, as well as a place of defense in later years to protect the British colony of New York, not only against hostile natives, but also a potential French incursion from Quebec to the north. Hendrik van Rensselaer served as an alderman in the Albany Assembly and on its commission of Indian Affairs. This site of the Hudson River was known as Greenbush, was fortified to protect against attacks, and in 1746, that's exactly what happened when a raiding party of 80 French and their allied natives attacked Greenbush, killing up to five persons. In 1754, Dr. Richard Schuckberg accompanied a British army expedition that was based here at Cralo, and according to Robert Van Rensselaer, the owner at the time, this was where Yankee Doodle was written by Dr. Schuckberg. It's located on Riverside Avenue in Rensselaer and has a waterfront yard facing the Hudson River and a sizable backyard. Among the historical holidays observed here is the Dutch Pinkster holiday, which marks the Pentecost on the calendar. In the colonial period, it was adopted by slaves and free blacks, blending Dutch and African traditions on a day when slaves were given a day off to rest. But seeing how it became a community building activity, in 1811, the Albany City Council banned the celebration of Pinkster by local African-Americans. It was revived in the 1970s, celebrated at Phillips Manor, Van Cortland Manor, and Cralo as a historical reenactment. In 2011, the ban was symbolically rescinded by the Albany City Council. This is the Cralo State Historic Set. And inside, displays relating to Dutch colonial life and African-Americans of the time. The, Reds, the Van Rensselaers were a group of wealthy landowning families known as the Patroons, who managed sizable estates on the labor of indentured servants and slaves. And the Van Rensselaers were patriots during the revolution, which means that they got to keep their manor in the new United States way into the 1840s, this uh, long lasting uh, remnant of feudalism. Across the Hudson River in Albany is the Schuyler Mansion State Historic Site. Revolutionary War General Philip Schuyler, also descendant of Dutch settlers, began construction on his Georgian style estate near Albany in 1761. Originally, this estate was 80 acres. His wife, Catherine, was a Van Rensselaer, and he's the father-in-law of Alexander Hamilton. 
Spy Network operated out of this home during the American Revolution. And on August 7th, 1781, there was a failed kidnapping attempt against Schuyler by the British. This mansion later hosted prominent guests such as George and Martha Washington, Benjamin Franklin, the Marquis de Chasteloup, and James Madison. During the revolution, this mansion also hosted a British general who lost the Battle of Saratoga, John Burgoyne, who stayed in the mansion as a prisoner guest in 1777 following his surrender at that battle. Fourteen slaves lived in this mansion working for the Schuylers. And that's why around 2022, a statue of Philip Schuyler outside of Albany City Hall was removed as part of our uh, awakening moment of American history and uh, re rethinking some of our historical figures. Now, I thought the statue would end up on the grounds of the mansion, but for now, the city of Albany is keeping it in storage. This is the Schuyler Mansion. Following the death of Schuyler in 1804, coincidentally, same year as Alexander Hamilton, none of his offspring wanted this mansion. They already established themselves elsewhere with spouses and children of their own. And therefore, in 1815, Schuyler's mansion was sold to a fur trader, John Bryan. Then in 1844, it passed to Ezekiel McIntosh, president of the Mohawk and Hudson Railroad Company. After he died in 1855, his widow, Catherine Carmichael, remarried former U.S. President Millard Fillmore in this mansion, in the same parlor room where Alexander Hamilton married Elizabeth Schuyler. The last private owner of this mansion was St. Francis de Sales Infant Asylum, selling it to state in 1911, which opened it to public in 1914. Like a great artwork, the state historic sites have a provenance or past ownership of their own with fascinating owners from one to another before they became public property. Peebles Island State Park at 142 acres was acquired by the state in 1973. Peebles Island's namesake was Maria Peebles, who inherited an interest in this 138-acre island at the junction of Hudson and Mohawk Rivers, at the time known as Haver or Oat Island in Dutch, from her brother, Anthony Van Schaik, also a descendant of Dutch settlers. She proceeded then to acquire all the other interests of her siblings, acquiring the entire island. The island was one of a series of colonial patents, it also included the island to its south, Van Schaik Island, granted to her great-great-grandfather, Goosen Gerritsen uh, Van Schaik, beginning in 1665. During the revolution, Tadeusz Kostiuszko built earthworks on the north side of Peebles Island to protect uh, the Albany against uh, the British attack. Fortunately, the British were defeated further north at Saratoga, so the earthworks never had to be put into use. Beginning 1835, Railroads crossed the island on their way north to Ballston Spa, making connection points north and west. Many island residents worked in the nearby mills, taking advantage of the water power generated by the Hudson and Mohawk Rivers, which have their confluence at Peebles Island. In 1862, Anthony Augustus Peebles, descendant of the Van Shakes, owned the entire island, and his name became the name of the island. 1909, Mary Peebles, a wife of Anthony Augustus, sold the island to Cluett Peabody and Company, a manufacturer of men's collars and shirts, and they owned a clothing bleaching facility on the island, creating industry until 1972. The old industrial buildings are now used by the park as an education and visitor center, and just to the north, uh, where the Mohawk River meets the Hudson River is also the eastern terminus of the Erie Canal, which follows the Mohawk River upstream to the west. So part of the Erie Canal Way near the city of Cohos. On the island of Peebles, there are historical signs testifying to its native history relating to the Mohawk people, because this is where Henry Hudson's uh, ship, the Half Moon, reached its northern tip of its voyage before going back out into the ocean, recognizing that the Hudson River is not the Northwest Passage. And here there's another sign showing the earthworks built by Kostiuszko, the Polish patriot who served in the American Revolution and later returned to Poland to fight against the Russians. And uh, finally, some of the bridges and industrial buildings from the late 19th, early 20th century at Peebles Island State Park. By the way, the Mohawk people who used to live on this island, that is an exonym given to them by the Algonquins a rival nation, when they spoke to the French, they called the Mohawk, meaning cannibals or man-eaters, but 
the actual name that the Mohawk people use for themselves is Kanyenkeha, people of the flint. And we'll speak of uh, Kanyenke later when we get to an episode on the St. Lawrence Islands. Another thing I also want to point out about the People's Island State Park, it is a stop on the Empire State Trail, a pet project of uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo that connects 700 miles of roads and trails so you can bike your way across the state from Battery Park in Manhattan to Buffalo Harbor State Park and to the tip of uh, the Champlain Valley route at Rouse's Point, La Colle border crossing towards Quebec. And where the Erie Canal, Champlain Valley, and Hudson Valley spurs of this trail meet is near Green Island, just to the south of Peebles Island State Park. So you can bike or walk your way across the state. The Empire State Trail has its own beautiful markers, because I'm a very big aficionado of graphic design and labeling, and nice historical signs along its way. These are all the state parks along the Empire State Trail. Just between New York City and Peebles Island, there's Schuyler Mansion, Martin Van Buren, which is a national park site, Alana, Claremont, Walkway Over the Hudson, Franklin Delano Roosevelt State Park, Rockaway, Rockefeller State Park Preserve, Riverbank State Park in Manhattan, and the Hudson River Park. It also intersects with the Appalachian Trail on its way. The next state park is the Mohawk River State Park. This state park is 107 acres acquired by the state in 2006. Previously, it was the Schenectady Museum Nature Preserve, a nature preserve along the Mohawk River in the town of Niskayuna, just near Albany and Schenectady. The new Mohawk River State Park is located near Lock 7 of the Erie Canal on the Hudson Mohawk Bike Path. It is the 175th state park when it was designated as such in 2006, just a day after the infamous Donald J. Trump State Park which I mentioned before. The hiking trail in this park is named after John Brown, not the abolitionist, but Dr. John F. Brown Jr., a chemist who worked for General Electric, which had a facility nearby on the Hudson River. So this is uh, the Mohawk River State Park. Grafton Lake State Park, 2,545 acres acquired by the state in 1945. It has four ponds and one reservoir, named after a nearby village of Grafton, which itself was named after an older village of Grafton in Vermont, from where its settlers came. The reservoir here used to provide water supply for the city of Troy, and the park rests on top of the Rensselaer Plateau in the county of Rensselaer. The 60-foot Dickinson Hill Fire Tower was erected and placed into service here in 1924, through a cooperative effort between the state and the city of Troy to prevent forest fires in the surrounding woodland. It remained in service until 1972. It was one of 102 fire towers erected by the state, of which only about half are still standing today. Uh, one of its longest uh, guards was Helen Ellett, who worked here from 1943, when there was a shortage of uh, male fire guards during World War II, and she just remained in service here even after the war, serving until 1965 as the second woman fire tower observer in the state. Her experience was later put into a book, I Remember When, the untold story of Ellen, El Helen Ellett, written by friends of Grafton State Park President Randy Kinnear. In the 1840s, the forests of Grafton Lake State Park was a scene of a standoff known as the Rent Wars of the 1840s, following Jacksonian democracy that extended the right to vote to non-property-owning white males, the tenant farmers on the manor of Rensselaersvik demanded greater rights against their landlord. The state militia was sent in, but the tenants formed their own political party and elected their own members to the state legislature, greatly increasing the pressure on the Van Rensselaers, reducing their political power. And gradually in 1840s, one of the last colonial period manners, this vestige of feudalism was broken up. Still on the map, we do have the county of Rensselaer on the east side of the Hudson River as a, remi as a rem reminder of that older manner of Rensselaersvik that preceded the rent war of 1840. Writer Granville Hicks lived on the site of, of Grafton Lake State Park while working as an assistant professor of English nearby at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. He wrote the book Small Town about his experiences in Grafton, which was published in 1846. There's a trail in the state park that carries the name of Granville Hicks. There's also a freshwater beach here, hiking, 
fishing and a fire tower and the brand new and beautiful Shaver Pond Nature Center in Grafton Lake State Park. In total, there are 54 beaches among the New York State Parks, 26 nature centers, 28 pools, 28 golf courses, and 360,000 acres of parkland statewide, 90% of them undisturbed wilderness. Among other such examples of undisturbed wilderness is Cherry Plain State Park at 175 acres, which became a state park in 1962, enveloped within a state forest. The Cherry Plain State Park is the Black River Pond, a reservoir built in the 1930s by the Civilian Conservation Corps. And the area surrounding is the Capital District Wildlife Management Area, which is uh, managed by the Department of Environmental Conservation. I think of a wildlife refuge being called a wildlife management area. I'm thinking, are there executive animals? Are there assistant animals? Are there chief of staff animals? What do we mean by management? I guess the animals are managing that area. This is uh, the Sherry Plain uh, State Park, which in the 1930s was called the Sherry Plain Game Refuge. I guess hunting with certain permits at the time. These are pictures from 1938 during the construction of the Black River Pond Reservoir by the Triple C, and this is from the New York State Archives Digital Collection. Skodak Island State Park in the Hudson River to the south of Albany. 1,052 acres acquired by the state as a park in 2002. It's in the heart of the Mohican homeland. Skodak, or I think it's Shodak, got, it name, got its name from the Mohican terms Ishoda, a fire plain, and Aki, land. So fire plain land, referring that this was the former home of the Mohican Central Council fire, where the Mohican nation gathered for their leadership decisions. During the time of the Mohicans, the area was occupied by the park was a group of six islands. The six islands were merged together and became a continuous peninsula in the early 1900s, following a federal project to construct a deep water navigation channel to Albany, with the construction of dikes and dredging, and the extra material dumped to create this lengthy landform that allows for a campsite, picnicking, and boating on Shodak Island State Park. The Shodak, as I mentioned, was the homeland of the Mohican Nation. Towards the end of the 18th century, the surviving Mohicans here were encouraged by missionaries to move to nearby Stockbridge, Massachusetts. And after that, they moved west to Wisconsin. So unfortunate story of a displacement. But I should note that there is a nearby island, just slightly upstream, where a nonprofit group gave the management of that island to the Mohicans. So there has been some return of the Mohicans to their historical homeland near Shodak Island. To the south of Shodak Island is another state park, the Hudson River Island State Park, of which I'll speak shortly. But other things to say about the history of the Shodak Island. It was here in the 19th century that these islands were used for ice harvesting. Ice was harvested from the Hudson River and brought downstream to New York City. Alfred H. Smith Railroad Bridge was built across Upper Shodak Island in 1923 the southernmost railroad bridge on the Hudson River, used for freight railway. Uh, what became Skodak Island State Park was initially called Castleton Island State Park, remaining undeveloped into the early 2000s. In 2002, Skodak Island State Park was opened as the state's 165th park. It was given its native name in recognition of its original indigenous owners and their place on the island as a council fire. Uh, other things to say that the campsites were available here to the public only in 2016. Hudson River Island State Park to south, 235 acres of a collection of small islands known as the Stockton Middle Ground and the southern tip of Gase Point. The park is open to the public from May to October, accessible only by boat. So very exclusive state park. The Rivers and Harbors Act of 1910 also here authorized the Army Corps of Engineers maintaining a 12-foot channel between New York City and Albany, and the depth was later increased to 27 feet, then to 32 feet, and all that dredged soil expanded the islands of the Hudson River Islands State Park, a nature preserve open to canoes and small boats. Now, a lot of the information about the Hudson River I got from these books, such as Hiking New York, Waterfalls of New York State, Hudson Valley, Erie Canal Book, Hudson, America's River, and an organization called Parks and Trails of New York, uh, an advocacy nonprofit that published a book, Cycling the Hudson Champlain Valley and Cycling the Erie Canal. 
There's also a National Geographic Guide to State Parks in the United States, but doesn't cover all the state parks, just the best ones in their view. And there was also a book published in the late 1980s called New York State Parks by Bill Bailey, a guide to New York State Parks. That one is the most detailed. But we've had so many new state parks created since 1988. And I would love to publish an updated guide to all the state parks in New York. But I know that today, with most people getting their information online, it takes a lot of effort to convince a book publisher to get a book out. But perhaps... It can happen. Another one of my sources for history of New York State Parks is the Historical Marker Database, an online site where people submit photos of historical markers across municipal, county, state, and national park sites that tells the history of those sites. And I love historical sites because it's a way of learning while being on vacation. John Boyd Thatcher State Park in Voorheesville, New York, also a Dutch name, Voorheesville, at 2,482 acres, acquired by the state in 1914. Among the things to see here, the Indian Ladder Trail used by the native Mohawks for trading. The trail passes underneath the Mine Lot Falls and by the stream exiting from a small cave at the base of the rocks. This water actually comes from Thompson Lake, makes its way through the porous limestone, goes underground, then emerges to the surface and falls down a waterfall. James Hall, New York State's first paleontologist, frequently visited the Helderberg Escarpment within this future state park, making observations on its unique fossils found in here. In 1930s, Winifred Goldring, New York State paleontologist, the first female state paleontologist in the nation, continued the work of Goldring. And in 1933, he wrote a guide to John Boyd Thatcher State Park. Within the state park is also Tory Cave, where reportedly in 1777, loyalist spy Jacob Salisbury was hiding on a mission from General Burgoyne. Helderberg Escarpment here is where the first mass meeting of tenant farmers took place during the anti-rent war of 1839-1840. Their convention of those rebellious tenant farmers took place near the town of Bern, New York, on the site of John Boyd Thatcher State Park. And they met here on July 4th, 1839, issuing a declaration of independence of their own, promising, quote, we will take up the ball of the revolution where our fathers stopped it and roll it to its final consummation of freedom and independence of the masses, end quote, independence from those feudal Van Rensselaers. The park was named after John Boyd Thatcher as he was a former mayor of Albany, and the land was given to the state by his widow, Emma Treadwell Thatcher. This park has a very beautiful nature center that resembles a cliff dwelling with great views of the valley from the park. And here's the waterfall and the escarpments, a place called Thatcher Point that was, uh, again, donated to state by his widow. And you can see all kinds of uh, bird species gliding above this valley from its cliff, like the falcons, among others, uh, turkey vulture, red-tailed hawk, and the common raven. Just to the south of John Boyd Thatcher State Park is a uh, Thompson Lake State Campground. Uh, that's 308 acres acquired by the state in 1961. The area around uh, Thompson Lake, the town of Bern, was known as uh, the Albany Hill Towns, where people from Albany, the Albanians, would go for their summer vacations and used to have a hotel overlooking the lake that burned down a long time ago. So now it's just a place for campgrounds, camping and swimming at the freshwater beach of the Thompson's Lake State Campground. Um, another thing I also want to point out about John Boyd Thatcher State Park is the beginning of a trail known as the Long Path, proposed by uh, Vincent Schaefer of Schenectady in the 1960s, runs from uh, John Boyd Thatcher State Park down to the George Washington Bridge in New York City at more than 347 acres. By the way, the visitor center in John Boyd Thatcher is post-millennial, completed in 2017. Max V. Shaw State Park in Fultonham, New York, overlooking Schoharie Creek, the largest tributary of the Mohawk River. At 68 acres, it was given to the state in 1959, originally known as the Towpath Mountain Picnic Area and Campsite. It opened in that year, 59, place for camping, hiking, and picnics. A local farmer and an involved citizen was Max V. Shaw, president of the New York State Agriculture Society. The park was given that name after his death in 1980. Max V. Shaw comes from 11 generation of farmers since 1701 and a descendant from the Vroman family, another old Dutch family. 
The Schoharie Creek Valley was known as the breadbasket of the revolution, very vital to feeding the soldiers who gave birth to this country. And there's a book about the Schoharie Valley, where I learned a lot about Max V. Shaw and his family, written by John P. D. Wilkinson. The Shaw Farms can be found to the north of this park, where there's arable land along the Schoharie Creek, and very much still in business, the Shaw Family Farms. Lake Lauderdale. It's a state park operated by Washington County, used for hiking and swimming. I was not able to find a lot of information on when this became a park, how many acres is this park, but yeah, it is state land that's uh, operated by the county with its freshwater beach on Lake Lauderdale. I don't think any relation to the fort and city in Florida, but yeah, same last name. Saratoga Lake Boat Launch, State Boat Launch. It's a four-acre state park that's just picnic tables and a boat launch at Fish Creek at the north end of Saratoga Lake. The name Saratoga is said to derive from the native Saratoga, meaning hillside country of the Great River. However, several different interpretations have been proposed for where the word Saratoga came from. Saratoga Lake has a long history of regatta racing, some of the boats coming from the state boat launch. Saratoga Spa State Park. This is a destination park or a flagship park on the same par as Minnewaska and Bear Mountain and Jones Beach when it comes to the amount of amenities, the size of the park, and the history. It is 2,379 acres acquired by the state in 1909. This hillside country of the Great River. In the 19th century, the area became very much visited for its purported medicinal effects, those mineral waters coming out of the ground, but entrepreneurs also looked to this land as a moneymaker. They dug wells here, bottled the mineral water for sale, and the gas companies sold the carbonation to soda fountains. By 1908, the springs were becoming depleted as they were uh, exploited and nearly exhausted. And that's when the New York State Assembly passed an injunction against further pumping of water from the springs of Saratoga. In 1909, Governor Charles Evans Hughes signed a law that made the springs a state reservation. 1930s, Saratoga Spa State Park was very much advertised as the state-owned and operated spring site for your medicinal effects and healing properties, a resort for the people, by the people. And so many historical signs could be found in this spring about saving the springs from industry, building the beautiful Hall of Springs, as well as the other amenities you could find here. There's tuff deposits here, these mineral deposits alongside Geyser Creek, where it looks uh, very small in this larger forest. So it certainly doesn't look like those white cliffs you might find in Turkey or further out west, but something different, the natural landform within Saratoga Spa State Park. The former bottling plant is now the Automobile Museum. There's also a golf course there. And the Saratoga Performing Arts Center used for classical and rock concerts throughout the year. In winter, the park is used for cross-country skiing. It also has a very beautiful uh, pool surrounded by this Georgian revival architecture of the 1930s. So again, from the Tuffa domes to the spouters. And those are not real geysers, just the pressure from the carbonic gas trapped beneath deep, la deep layers of shale underneath. The park also is home to the Putnam, Gideon Putnam Resort and Spa and the Peerless Pool of Olympic size and the Victoria Pool. It's 1930s buildings, one of my favorite parks in this region, the Saratoga Spa State Park. Morrow Lake State Park. As we go further north, you'll see more French names. And Morrow Lake is 4,531 acres, became a state park in 1967, located near the town of Gansevoort, named after a Revolutionary War general of Dutch ancestry. Moro was known, the Moro's name and the lake's name was uh, after, created sometime after 1804, when people who settled in this town were impressed by a visiting Frenchman, General Jean-Victor Moreau, who left a lasting impression on this town and endowed it with his name. Moreau was initially a supporter of the French Revolution, but then became a rival of Napoleon's. And so for his own life, he fled to America. Uh, but later, uh, when returned to France, was killed in battle. So it was Moreau, Jean Victor Moreau. Uh, Tsar Alexander I of Russia called General Monroe to Europe to fight on behalf of the Russians against Napoleon, became a military advisor for the Russians in the battle in Germany, where he was killed in 1813. 
fighting against the French, his own kinsmen. The Lakeshore Cottage within Moreau Lake provides everything from refrigerators, stoves, dishes, utensils. There's also uh, other forms of campsites here and smaller cabins and a place to pitch your own tent or RV. There's beaver dams that could be found in Moreau Lake and 10 species of fish in this lake. The Hudson River flows through this state park and there's the Spear Falls Dam built here in 1903. At the time, it was the fourth largest dam in the world and the largest power dam as well. 29 workers died to build this dam, mostly Italian immigrants. The park is also close on its southern side to the Grant Cottage State Historic Site. But there's more to say about it because these are pictures of the dam, which so important that appeared in the Scientific American magazine at the time of its construction, early 20th century. And then there's the Big Bend Preserve, a separate property, just slightly downstream on the Hudson River on the border of Saratoga and Warren counties that was acquired by the state a few years ago and now being redeveloped for its nature trails. It does have a historic cemetery on the site as well. It operated from the 1790s to the 1870s. So more than nine miles of Hudson River shoreline are now protected within Moreau Lake State Park. There's also the artificial Lake Bonita within the park and the mud pond. More than 150 campsites in total can be found here within the Moro Lake State Park and its wet, freshwater wetlands. Now, I mentioned that to the south of the park is a Grant Cottage State Historic Site, and as well as a place called Mount McGregor, which appears in this map as a firing range. By the way, uh, this park also has the Friends of Moro Lake State Park. There's more than 170 conservancy groups where there's private philanthropy and volunteering to augment the public support of these state parks. Grant Cottage, State Historic Site. When Grant died of throat cancer on July 23rd, 1885, it was in this house where he lived for the last few weeks of his life. The house is maintained as a shrine to the former Civil War general turned 18th president by the Mount McGregor Memorial Association, a series of live-in caretakers. It became a state historic site in 1957. The original owner of this house was Joseph William Drexel, a New York banker of German descent and a friend of Grant who loaned him that house. The last six weeks of Grant's life was spent here among the nature. Uh, the author and publisher Mark Twain visited this house and gave Grant an advance of $25,000 to write his memoirs. Grant completed the manuscript just three days before his death. So job done. The Victorian Hotel and Resort that originally surrounded the cottage was lost to fire in 1897. And here's where we get to a really interesting curiosity behind these trees on the summit of Mount McGregor. But before that, there is a master plan to add more amenities to the Grant Cottage State Historic Site, a memorial space, a picnic area, an overlook, and more parking spots. But here's where it gets interesting. Behind Grant's Cottage is the summit of Mount McGregor and a series of buildings that appear on the map as a firing range. For now, they are unused. This was a former Victorian hotel, which then became a tuberculosis sanitarium, a veterans rest camp, a developmentally disabled asylum. And then from 1976 till 2014, the Mount McGregor Correctional Facility, a New York state prison, which closed in 1914. And since then, these 43 acres have been unused, sometimes used for tours, sometimes for movie shoots. Certainly a great place to explore and trespass if you can't get the, past the barbed wire. And it certainly has a scenic views from the top, but for now, its future remains uncertain at the summit of Mount McGregor, enveloped by the Morrow Lake State Park and the Grants Cottage State Historic Site. Bennington Battlefield. The town of Bennington is located just to the east of the battlefield within the state of Vermont, but the battlefield took place within the bounds of New York State. But it's all murky because in 1777, New York considered Vermont to be part of New York. But that area was also called the New Hampshire Grants. The people who lived on those grants wanted to secede from New York and become the 14th state. But because New York refused to recognize Vermont as a separate entity, the people of Vermont declared independence as the Green Mountain Republic, the Republic of Vermont which maintained its unrecognized independence until 1790, when under George Washington as president, it was accepted as the 14th state of the Union. The Bennington Battlefield celebrates the contributions of Ethan Allen and the Green Mountain Boys 
in stopping a British advance by Colonel Breumann, the British and the Hessian forces. It contributed to the Patriot victory at Saratoga, just to the south, by reducing the strength of the British army, having stopped them at Bennington and maintaining not only their own arsenal, but also capturing British weapons that were later transported to Boston to recapture that city from the British. This is uh, 1,250 acres. The battle here was fought on August 16, 1777. The victory of the Patriots reduced Burgoyne's army by almost a thousand men. His Native American supporters abandoned him, fleeing further north into Canada, depriving Burgoyne of supplies, including horses. So even though it's called Bennington Battlefield, it's actually located within uh, Walloomsac, within the New York State town of Hoosac. Scoharie Crossing State Historic Site. At the confluence of the Mohawk River and Scoharie Creek was the Native American fortified village of Tionondarog. It's a Mohawk meaning, meaning the meeting of the waters, where Scoharie, the biggest uh, tributary to the Mohawk River, flows into it. And uh, a settlement was uh, established here on this small island at the confluence in 1710. Uh, it was uh, known as Fort Hunter and was used also as an Anglican mission for the Mohawks, named after uh, colonial governor Robert Hunter. During the revolution, these Mohawks were loyalist, and as the Patriots gained the upper hand in that war, they fled to Canada. Queen Anne's Chapel was within that fort, used as a tavern and a stable, but the chapel, the old fort at the confluence was demolished in 1822 to make way for Erie Canal, because there is a cataract here on the Mohawk River. The Erie Canal originally flows just to the south of that site. And as the canal was enlarged two more times, this uh, original path of the canal was then abandoned, gradually recaptured by nature. In 1940s, the Army Corps of Engineers demolished the easternmost six arches of the aqueduct that used to cross here to alleviate the ice jams. Another arch collapsed during the 17, 1977 flood, and then another one in 1998. There are six arches left standing today at Schoharie Crossing, and certainly plenty of historical markers here. An old house that's used as a visitor center, and a small remnant of Fort Hunter and Queen Anne Chapel that was found and outlined in these stones at the confluence of Schoharie Creek and uh, the Mohawk River. Other things to say, the Fort Hunter Canal Society was formed in the 1950s to preserve the ruins of Erie Canal in Fort Hunter. 1966, the state-owned land at Fort Hunter was transferred to state parks agencies, and a visitor center in that old house opened in 1987. There was flooding here in 2011 during Hurricane Irene when a parking lot washed away, and that's how these foundations of old Fort Hunter were re revealed by nature. At Scoharie Crossing, there are signs talking about the history of the park, the damage caused by Hurricane Irene, the old aqueduct, and the remaining arches, the locks here, and the canal's expansion from original canal of 1825, then an expansion from the 1830s to the 1860s, and then again, the last expansion was 1918, as the canal struggled to compete against railroads, and then cars and trucks and airplanes. So today the canal is mostly for recreational use. And yes, you do have to pay a toll on that, as it's maintained by the state. This is the original canal, very narrow, DeWitt Clinton's ditch, where mules pulled the flatboats. So this is all within the Schoharie Crossing State Historic Site. Johnson Hall Historic Site in Johnstown, New York, that got its name from Johnson. The Johnson Hall State Historic Site is just 18 acres, acquired by the state in 1906. It was used as a private residence by various owners until that year, when the state bought it. Its namesake is Sir William Johnson, the first Baronet Johnson of New York, a title given by King George III, just before the revolution. So yes, New York State did have its own nobility, named after the state. So that was the first Baronet Johnson. He built the house in 1763, just after the French and Indian War, when the French were expelled from Canada. And he was the British agent to the natives. He was declared an honorary Mohawk sachem, and uh, though they weren't officially married, his companion was Molly Brandt, uh, who was related to uh, the chief Joseph Brandt of the Mohawk people. So his children were part native, part English, uh, these noble nobility of New York. He established uh, Johnstown in 1762. It had a free school for both white and Mohawk children. 
So an early model of integration. He also had Irish tenant farmers, but at the same time, he also had 60 slaves working this uh, plantation farm in upstate. His children, was, he had children, Molly Brandt. She was the sister of Joseph Brandt. But with the outbreak of the revolution in 1776, his son, Sir John Johnson, second baronet of New York, left for Canada. Sir William is buried nearby, having died here in 1774, just before the outbreak of the revolution. The original farm was more than 700 acres, and now just 18 acres remain, just outside of Johnstown. And he's buried in Johnstown by the church, St. John's Episcopal Church, also related to the name Johnson. So that's uh, our own nobility. And I know many generations later, there are still Baronet Johnsons in merry old England, but I'm not sure if the Baronet Johnsons call themselves of New York, since uh, the British have lost New York. Mine Kill State Park, but we're looking at the Blenheim Gilboa Reservoir. It's 395 acres, designated in 1973 as a state park. It has an Olympic sized outdoor pool, sports field, a gorge, and an 80 foot waterfall on Mine Kill Creek. It is also known for a unique sport disc golf. Throw the disc into this basket on a green fairways here. Um, could be said uh, here about the disc golf, the you know, plastic discs, instead of a ball and clubs, try to land in an elevated metal basket with the fewest strokes possible. The park is also alo located along the long path that originally began at John Boyd Thatcher State Park, but now begins in the Adirondacks in Northville. And uh, there is a historic marker within the park, sponsored by AmeriCorps, the New York, New Jersey Trail Conference and Hike Long Path that talks about its creator, the first person to hike it, and the time it takes to hike this trail. So unlike the Appalachian or the Empire State Trail, a lot less famous, less developed, but certainly an experience as you hike from the Adirondacks through the Mohawk Valley, through the Catskills, Hudson Valley, Hudson Highlands, towards New York City. This is the map of uh, the Minekill State Park Disc Golf Course. Old Guy Park House. In 1763, Guy Johnson married his uncle, William Johnson's daughter, Mary. So William, Sir William Johnson's daughter, Mary, married Guy Johnson and one of his children by his first concert, Catherine Weisenberg, before Molly Brandt. Uh, his uncle, Sir William, gave them a square mile of land on the Mohawk River in what is now the town of Amsterdam. Sorry, the small city of Amsterdam, New York. 1773, they built their first home, but it was destroyed by a lightning strike. So a year later, they built a much stronger limestone house in the Georgian style, overlooking the Mohawk River. And they called this house Guy Park, after Guy Johnson. But because they were loyalists, they were forced to leave. And they fled to Canada with other loyalists, settling near Fort Niagara. On the way, Polly Johnson died at Oswego. This house later was used as a stagecoach, st stagecoach stop on the westward trail that followed the Mohawk River and Erie Canal. And since the early 20th century, it was preserved as a state historic site. Recently used as a Walter Elwood Museum for local history, it was damaged severely by Hurricane Irene in 2011, and still in need of a complete restoration. Recently, there were plans to restore not just the mansion, but also the grounds around it, and the, the lock bridge that controls the water flow on the Mohawk River, plans to bring pedestrian access to the bridge, it connected the Empire State Trail on the south side of the river with beautiful lighting, but for now, still in the planning stages, turn the Lock 11 bridge into a pedestrian crossing. Amsterdam, New York is the birthplace of uh, Isur Davidovich Dembski, better known as Kirk Douglas, so a local son who moved west and became a big star in screen acting. John Brown Farm, State Historic Site. Garrett Smith established a land-grant colony here in 1849 for African Americans at North Elba, New York, considered to be the highest farm in New York State with views of Mount Marcy, our highest point. John Brown moved to this area in 1849, this outspoken, militant abolitionist, and the farm area would have been called Timbuktu after a legendary city in Mali in West Africa. Uh, but none of African Americans moved here, winter conditions were harsh, and the end, only one of the Black farmers here stayed with the Browns, while others moved elsewhere. Uh, yeah, all but one Black resident. Uh, John Brown didn't spend a lot of time on this farm, 
those family did, because he spent time fighting in bloody Kansas to keep that state from becoming a slave state. And as a result, the, the territory of Kansas became a free state in 1861, a couple of years after John Brown went down to Virginia to organize a slave uprising at Harper's Ferry, where he was captured, put on a trial, considering himself a martyr for the cause of freedom. And John Brown's body was buried on the grounds of his farm. His name, his legacy, of course, is Marching On, as the famous song goes. Uh, but Mary Brown sold the farm in 1866 and moved out west to California. It was later purchased by a pioneering journalist, Kate Field, in memory of John Brown, to preserve the farm. She formed the John Brown Association to oversee the preservation of what she called John Brown's Grave and Farm, making it accessible to visitors. After her death, New York State acquired the farm in 1896. Now, even though this park is managed by the Saratoga Capital Region of State Parks, it's located within a larger preserved space called Adirondack Park. The Adirondack Park uh, was designated by the state in 1892. And then another one, Catskill Park, was uh, also developed by the state in 1885, both managed by the Department of Environmental Conservation. Adirondack Park, because it's the rooftop of New York, home to our highest mountains and unique uh, in habitats. Unlike a typical park within Adirondack Park, there are communities, towns, and villages where people can live, but any development that goes on there has to be carefully vetted by the state to make sure that animal habitats and watersheds are protected. Likewise with the Catskill Forest Preserve, which envelops the reservoirs that bring drinking water to New York City. And that's why there are no state parks within Catskill Forest Preserve and just two state park sites within the Adirondack Park, because it's already pretty well preserved by another state agency, Department of Environmental Conservation. And many of the state forests that are within these two parks have opportunities for hiking and cross-country skiing and camping. So yeah, Adirondack Park and Catskill Forest Park Preserve. The Adirondack, that thing is bigger than Yellowstone, bigger than some of our smallest states. So here is a little bit more about the John Brown Farm, including uh, quotes from Reverend Henry Highland Garnett, describing uh, the potential of these farms, agrarianism. You, you own the farm and you grow your own produce. John Brown uh, grew up in uh, New England, uh, during the War of 1812, at the age of 12, sent by his father to deliver cattle to the army. He saw how slaves were mistreated, and it gave him uh, some of his first uh, thoughts about abolitionism. And uh, as I said, in 1859, with 21 men under his command, tried to attack a federal arsenal at Harper's Ferry and use the weapons for an uprising. There were, he was captured by Colonel Robert Lee, who later became a Confederate general. Continuing on... This again, uh, the journalist Kate Field, who preserved John Brown's farm. And then 1935, sculptor Joseph Polia created a sculpture in memory of John Brown, uh, holding the hand of a young black boy, leading him to freedom. The last park in this uh, episode of the Saratoga Capital Region is Crown Point State Historic Site. Uh, a point looking north on Lake Champlain that was originally developed by the French between 1734 and 1738 as Fort saint Frederick, a southern redoubt of their larger colony of Quebec and Canada. This uh, fort was uh, designed to expand the French presence along Lake Champlain and possibly push further down into New York. But in 1759, as the French were losing their war against the, against the British, they abandoned the fort and blew it up, leaving it as a ruin. When the British arrived, they built a fort right next to the ruins of St. Frederick, and they called it Crown Point in 1759, uh, a place of uh, establishing their military presence in the Champlain Valley, protecting it against a possible French return or native uprisings. And it served the British until 1773, when an accidental fire in the chimney burned out this fort. Perhaps it's a bit forgotten because it did not see service during the revolution, but just to the south of Crown Point is a much larger fortress, Ticonderoga, which was also used by the French, then by the British, then by the Patriots. And then after the War of 1812, when the British had made peace with the United States, we stopped having designs on Canada, and British Canada stopped having designs on New York. 
the border was established, the forts along Champlain were abandoned. And they were that way until the early 20th century when the state recognized their historical value. So that's what you see today, the ruins of Crown Point and Fort St. Frederick. There's also a bridge here that connects to Vermont. And this is also uh, the eastern terminus of the North Country National Scenic Trail, managed by uh, the North Country Trail Association, National Park Service, and the New York State Parks, that runs from North Dakota through Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York, ending here. Though there is also an extension of the trail continuing into Vermont and New Hampshire. So within the visitor center model of Crown Point, there's also a very beautiful lighthouse uh, in a ancient Greek style, reminiscent of the Karajic Monument of Lysicrates or the Soldier Sailors Memorial of Riverside Park, Manhattan. The bridge here at Lake Champlain is located at a narrow point. Uh, it was replaced around uh, 2011 with a much uh, sleeker, more streamlined version of the bridge. As the signs point out, because Lake Champlain points towards the south, connected to St. Jean Richelieu River, towards St. Lawrence, but also to the south of it, you have the Champlain and Lake George Valleys and then Hudson River. This is why the British during the revolution tried to bisect the colonies, sending Burgoyne down Champlain, General Howe and General Clinton up the Hudson, and then uh, St. Leger, Barry St. Leger, along the Mohawk River. Well, the British were stopped uh, somewhere near West Point and its southern prong. General Burgoyne was stopped at Saratoga and Bennington, and Saint Leger was stopped around Fort Stanwix. And so that British idea of uh, partitioning New York was stopped. But this was part of their plan, the Champlain Valley. Having finished uh, the video on Saratoga Champlain region, our next episode here will be the central region. Uh, which is the heartland of the Iroquois Confederacy. Counties of Oswego, Oneida, Onondaga, named after the natives, Otsego County and Shenango County, but as well as Herkimer County, named after a local revolutionary commander, where you could find cities of uh, Rome and Syracuse and Utica and Binghamton can be found in this region, where we will talk about the Oriskany Battlefield, some of the state parks on the beautiful beaches of Lake Ontario, as well as the smallest state park in the system at just about an acre. Covered bridges, waterfalls, and boat ramps can be found within the central region as our next episode. On this map, you could see the circle for Albany, just as a point of reference. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I look forward to sharing the next one soon. Thank you very much.